remind everybody that all of us are safer at home. Let me repeat that. All of us are safer at home. That is the direction of the Department of Public Health. That is what the science tells us. And that is what we've seen across the country and across the world. We know that this is the right way to respond to the pandemic. Listen to our county health professionals. They have been clear. If you can stay home, stay home. If you can work at home, work at home. Only our critical workers should be going to work and they should practice social distancing whenever humanly possible. And I can see that Angelinos are answering this call. What seemed impossible on Sunday when we took some of the boldest measures in the country have resulted in quite empty streets, shopping malls that look like ghost towns, schools that are closed, and buildings that are a small reflection of what they once were. I know that can seem unsettling, but those pictures are good news and proof of the progress you are making. I know that critical workers and members of the public still need to get to work in some cases and of course get to the grocery store or pharmacy. And many Angelinos depend on public transportation in LA County. So let me give you an update there. Our residents have to ride those buses and trains to get them where they need to be. So I want to reassure people that LA Metro will keep running those buses and those trains. They'll be talking to all of us a little bit more on Friday about the way they're adjusting schedules. But I want to reassure people that it will never close. In fact, we need to make sure that our nurses, medical assistants, folks who are cleaning our hospitals, our grocery clerks, and others who don't have their own car and have no other options can continue to get to work. Metro crews have been cleaning religiously, adding all of the extra cleanings to make sure that those spaces are safe and we ask riders to make sure that they also maintain as safe a social distance as possible. The agency will, as I mentioned, release more detailed information about those ridership numbers, about any operational changes, but I want to reassure people that you can still go Metro to do the critical work that you need to do if you're a critical worker and to do those errands that we all will need to do throughout this crisis. As with Metro, we continue to coordinate across Los Angeles County with our partners. And I want to thank uh, County Supervisor Catherine Barger and Long Beach Mayor Robert Garcia, who led a call today with the 88 mayors of Los Angeles. Along to Whittier, from Calabasas to San Gabriel, and beyond. It was a call to discuss how we can all plan to be safer at home and to prepare for steps that we probably all feel are inevitable in the days ahead as we coordinate together, copy best practices, and ensure that there are no loose ends of one city's gymnasiums open while other ones are closed, and that all of us are reinforcing that it is safer at home and that we all have that work to do. How can we travel less, see fewer people? How can we telecommute and still do our jobs? I'll reiterate what I said last night, though, because I know it's on a lot of your minds. Shelter in place and lockdown are not phrases that we should be using. Shelter in place, they're the wrong descriptions to describe not only what we see here, but even in those places that sometimes are described with those terms in San Francisco or San Jose. Shelter in place refers to stopping where you are, usually almost always not at home, during a public safety emergency like a school shooting. And lockdown implies that people literally cannot leave their home or wherever they are. Today, the unprecedented measures and closures in our city and across our country and county, excuse me, continue. But every day, every hour, we are monitoring those, this situation and evaluating new orders. And let me assure everybody, I will be prepared to take whatever steps are recommended by our county in coordination with all of the cities across this county. We are all safer at home, and we hope that you will continue to do just that. This isn't LA's first emergency, so let me turn next to the great action that we saw from our city council. And I want to thank council leadership and council members who spent an entire day making sure we were ready to meet this challenge. I want to reassure those residents of LA City, our reserve fund is at twice the level it was, a record level, and twice what it was before the 2008 Great Recession. And because we did plan ahead and we socked those dollars away, we were able to work together with the City Council to secure $20 million out of the Reserve Fund. I want to thank our uh, Chair of our Budget Committee, Paul Kikorian, 
Council leadership for creating the COVID-19 Emergency Response Fund to put the full might of our government behind the response, to buy the things we need, to offer the relief that we can while we wait for even more federal and state assistance. With a new emergency fund set up, you'll have the tools we need to ramp up clear and coordinated actions in the face of the pandemic. And in the spirit of mobilizing every resource at our disposal today, I activated the Disaster Service Worker Program, something under the powers that I'm accorded in the Charter. This is a step that allows us to redeploy any city employee necessary to combat this crisis, including our efforts to house the homeless. As we ask people to remain safe at home, we know that too many Angelinos don't even have that option. They have no home to go to. If we do not act now, this pandemic could see our homeless population disproportionately affected, and they already disproportionately have the underlying health conditions that make them the most susceptible to morbidity. In simple terms, they are the ones who disproportionately could die as a result of this crisis. As many Angelinos know, long before this pandemic reached our communities, we've re rolled out in the county of Los Angeles, thanks to the voters, and across our cities, many comprehensive strategies to combat homelessness. I think stood out in this room less than a year ago for a level of response. And while we've seen some more dollars come, thanks to Sacramento and Governor Newsom and our legislature, and negotiations commence with our federal government, we may finally be getting some of those dollars that we need in this crisis to bring our homeless home and to address this public health emergency. We have launched before the crisis the swiftest deployment of shelters anywhere in America, alongside adding new supportive permanent housing units, expanding our existing stock of affordable housing, and providing vital sanitation and health services to folks both living on the street and people living near them. Over the past 19 months, we opened next, sorry, 12 new bridge home shelters, transitional housing shelters with 813 beds, and another 14 are due to open before July 1st but we needed to ramp up this momentum during a crisis like this. We didn't have to wait to get moving on steps to help our homeless re residents as COVID-19 spread began. We're ready, to able, ready, willing, and able to activate this coalition we've already built and get to work. We've already changed our engagement strategies on the streets of LA City, and I know throughout LA County, acting quickly to keep our 500 winter shelter beds open now until September and training our outreach uh, teams to support social distancing on our streets. And we've delivered now uh, nearly 300 hand washing stations and 120 mobile bathrooms at encampments because good hygiene practices remain an important tool in this fight. And while we have zero confirmed COVID-19 cases among the unhoused in Los Angeles, we know there are probably cases out there and this could change any moment. So I've directed our city to launch an unprecedented effort to move folks to safety. As we make thoughtful and strategic plans in the days ahead, we're working to identify those who are the most vulnerable out there, instructing our homeless services authority throughout the county to identify the 4,000 individuals who are most at risk, those ones who have the underlying medical conditions and who are of the age where morbidity is higher with coronavirus. During this emergency, we will suspend rules that require unsheltered individuals to take their tents down during the day, making it easier for this at-risk population to practice safe social distancing and remain visible to outreach workers who are focused on getting them crucial services. But we are going to work to relocate vulnerable Angelinos indoors into low barrier congregate settings with the proper spacing and into some shelter spaces that have been in the pipeline to open in the near future. So let me announce what we're going to do today. With our partners at the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, the City Department of Transportation and LAPD, we're going to deliver 6,000 beds at 42 recreation centers across the city of Los Angeles. By the end of this week, we will bring more than 1,600 beds online in 13 recreation centers. That will be the first phase. These beds are being provided by the American Red Cross. And let me thank them tonight. And if you have even a little extra cash, they're a wonderful place to donate to. It will be paid for with city dollars, state aid, and federal dollars through FEMA reimbursements. So if we take these emergency shelter beds and add in our bridge home shelter beds, this means we can bring 7,000 unhoused Angelinos off the streets and in emergency housing. 
the most in recent memory, maybe ever in this city's history, and at least in a generation in this country. And we are in touch with federal and state officials for additional properties and places where we can bring these folks indoors. We have the supplies, we have the space, and we are prepared for this task. In the days ahead, I will call on dedicated public servants in our city to help us meet this moment. And I can't thank those homeless uh, service provider community workers enough. We've said a lot about grocery clerks being heroes, of course our doctors, nurses, janitors and our hospitals, our first responders. But you too are amazing workers meeting this crisis and I want to thank you for showing up to work. I want you to, to thank you for doing some of the hardest work there is out there even before this crisis. And you are on the front lines. We see you and we appreciate you. We are here to support your teams and to surge people to work with you. So we will have those city workers and county workers in a safe environment with police there for security to make sure that each one of these areas is a place where folks who are not exhibiting symptoms but are vulnerable to it can be safe from COVID-19. To be clear, people uh, will go through triage before with county public health workers and those who do have symptoms will be taken to medical care by the county. These are for the rest of the population to stay safe and anybody who exhibits symptoms in these shelters will be connected with that care immediately as well. In a moment of profound need, I'm so grateful to the men and women of this city and this county. Mm -hmm.